learn from your word. I want to ask you to look down on us, the ones that was mentioned that were sick, and help us during this time of this COVID-19. Help us to stay strong, help our faith to remain strong. Watch over us and protect us throughout this epidemic. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Trying to decide if I'm going to stay in the weeds or do the lesson I've got in my book. <laughs> Amy, you want a boat? <laughs> decisions, decisions. I was, uh, I think I'm going to stay in the weeds. Uh, I was at supper on Wednesday night. Took David, life, his family out to eat. Planned to provide them for a, a night lodging but they had family members so they took care of that so at least we could do is feed them so we did while we're sitting there and having a conversation about life David says something about online services and the broadcasts and he said I wish it would all go away quit stop do it no more none and I said why he said because I think it is preventing the church from acting properly. I said, okay, How, what do you mean? He said, well, I don't think this is, a, I don't think this is right, what we're doing. Uh, he said, Hebrews chapter 10, 25 teaches us to assemble and gather to worship God, and we're not, or at least lots of folks aren't, which brings up a very interesting question. And we had, an inter had a nice little debate there over... Uh, that topic as we sat in I'm another step into the weeds if you grew up with people and then they got married you tend to call them by the name you knew them as they grew up not their married name I always thought that was weird until now I've been old enough to have that experience and I do that there's a restaurant over on highway 72 and you know what it is it's four max. Yeah. In my mind, it's four max. It'll always be four max. And when I try to name it, that's what comes out of my mouth. I just nearly said four max. Okay, so we're over there at O'Brien's, which y'all, if you didn't know it was four max, then you know you're just missing out. You know why? Are, why are you still breathing? You know, just go ahead and, and go home and put a bag over your head. Joking. Um. So we're sitting there at uh, at four max, having this conversation about. Hebrews 10.25, and I said, okay. Then uh, when, when the government, how would we describe that? Insisted on, demanded, recommended that we stop having gatherings of worship back in March? And we can debate on the terminology we use. And we started broadcasting our services as the only means of gathering together, did was that wrong? Common sense. God did give us common sense, too. <clears throat> and he said, "Before you get too far along to common sense discussion, I will bring up the word Uzza. Be careful where you go. Uzza, yeah. Uzza, and like an AR-15 or something. <laughs> As in, like reached out and touched the ark while David was moving it back to Jerusalem on the cart, and God struck him dead. Uzza. As in Nadab and Abihu, who took strange fire into worship God, and God struck them dead. Okay, go ahead. I now, I'm talking about the New Testament. <laughs> okay, let's talk about Ananias and Sapphira, who the only thing they did wrong was say that they gave more in the contribution than they actually did, and God That's struck them dead. Okay, so it's a lie versus trying to help. Okay. His answer, and I'm playing devil's advocate here. I'm going to work both sides. His answer was, uh, "We're doing the best we can. We did the best we could under the circumstances." But now, that's not okay. I said, all right, so it was okay in March, but it's not okay now. I said, that's where you're going to end up standing on this. It was okay in March, but it wasn't okay now. His answer was, we were doing the best we could. 
And that would be our explanation to God was that we were doing the best we could. And I said, okay, that sounds pretty good until you start applying some other places where the folks maybe thought they were doing the best they could and God didn't take such a keen view of that. Render under Caesar the things that are Caesar. If the government says you cannot do this, does that not apply to the same thing? That you are under the rule of man's law as much as God's law? When the Christians of the first century were persecuted and died for being Christians, do you think there was ever a conversation about, you know, we really shouldn't go to church because if you do, they're going to know you're Christians, and if they find out you're Christians, they're going to take your property, and they're going to put you in jail, and they may take your life. So let's just stay home. And in that context, we have Hebrews 10, 24, and 25. As we gather together and stir one another up unto love and good works, and not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. Now, what was the context of what was going on in their world? They weren't worried about going to the church building and getting sick. Most of them didn't have a church building per se, but they had gatherings where they gathered with the, the Lord's body and worship. They were, inter- they were uh, worried about being arrested having their property confiscated, maybe being put to death. Now, can you imagine having the conversation with those folks who said, you know, we showed up under these conditions and you're not going to church, why? And of course, many of the responses of ours would say, well, you know, it is a life threat possibly to some of our folks, to certain members of our society, those who have uh, underlying conditions, it certainly is the case. And I think one of the big debates that we're having right now. Some some folks really will believe what David did because of the fact that they, that even when they told us we couldn't gather, they still gathered and some of them were arrested and everything because of yeah. they defied that. There are at least two categories of forces that we have as recognizing the, the relationship to the virus, right? For some who, you know, typically would say, I got it probably not, let's say limited to no. Uh, I'm going to be as fair to the concept. There are some persons who don't feel like this is a threat at all. In fact, if you read and listen to much, they'll say this has been overblown, overplayed, overhyped. This is nothing but people who are trying to destroy the presidency. They're trying to wreck the economy. They're trying to, and you've got all of that conversation that goes on there. And from the uh, CDC, uh, they will say that most people who are under the age of whatever age limit they put and do not have underlying health conditions, the b- likelihood of you getting something that is life threatening from this disease is pretty limited, right? You know what they're saying? Percentage wise, it's a very small percentage of people who are going to be affected by this in a, in a dramatically unhealthy way. Then you've got another group of folks. And they do have underlying conditions, and they are in association with people, and they are in proximity to people. They deal with them, they provide health care, they live in the same household, etc. So for these people, there is an existential threat to them if they have or bring in an unseen, unknown, undetectable, maybe even an untestable virus. So you have two extreme reactions. On one side, you've got folks who say, this is, this is stupid and we shouldn't be doing anything. Just go back to work and, and go on about your business and let it happen. And the other group says, we go back to work and go back to our business and let it happen, then my family will be impacted severely or myself will be impacted severely. 
Now, balancing this out has been a challenge. And I don't think it's going to go away quickly. And that's where our school systems are, and that's where our churches are, and that's where our people are. And, and then we can compound that by lots of other things, right? All right, having said all that, what am I supposed to do with Hebrews 10.25? I'm a preacher. I'm reading there. Okay, First Corinthians, First uh, Corinthians is probably out. Let's go to Hebrews ten twenty five. <clears throat> Verse nineteen. Yeah, we're starting up early. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which He consecrated for us through the veil that is His flesh, having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near. With a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession, that's the third let us, of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Number four, oh, excuse me, no, number three, three now. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more, as you see the day approaching. All right. I think I could make an argument that said, if we were facing an existential threat, if the world was going to come to an end in a month, if, satellite, if a scientist determined that there is an asteroid out in space and it is on a collision course with Earth and it is the size of the moon so that when we hit, there's going to be nothing but rubble. Absolute fact. It's a certainty. In a month, we're all going to be dead. How would that affect you going to church? I don't think you'd be any confused. <laughs> You think folks, if they knew in a month they were going to meet God, would act different? That, that's yes. what I think. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You are going to be dead in a month. You are going to say, hello, how are you? To God in less than a season. Would it affect how you live your life? I think it might. All right, so given that, we would argue that if there was something that had the potential to be life-threatening, it would cause us to be more religious or more uh, anxious to make sure that our life was okay and, and appropriate. For at least one category of people, does that, doesn't that fall into this category right here? That it does represent a severe threat or a significant risk to our lives? Would this group of persons not feel a need to become more spiritual? Yes. I'm just no. questioning. Yes and no. We're dealing with an asteroid. Absolutely, this day, you're done. Having a virus, you have a way of staying at home to keep from getting it. That gives you the possibility of expanding your life. You have a way of going to a hospital to, if you do get it, of going to a hospital to seek treatment for it versus an absolute ending. Um, you take your chances with the virus. Assuming, assuming that there had been no health issue that came up, and this year, for whatever reason, about half of our church folks were not coming to church. Do you think the elders would want me to preach on the need for us to be worshiping effectively as God intended? Do you think Hebrews 10.25 would be a topic they'd want me to talk about? Yes. I suspect so. I think it would be appropriate. We need to talk about it. What, what is it that's keeping us from, from worshiping together? And so now, here we are in this unique situation. And... Uh, I, I'm not impugning the judgment or the or the uh, the spirituality or the intent of folks. Elders of good churches of of good men have told their members not to come to church, not to gather together in worship, and that's what David was was talking about Wednesday night. You know, 
have we gotten in this place? How can we, as Christians, say to people, don't come to worship? How, how can we do that? When, you know, our, our whole life we've been talking about the need for us gathering together for worship. And I said, I'll agree. So, I'm asking you, how should I, Preacher Tim, how should I preach Hebrews 10, 24, 25, right now. What am I supposed to say about this topic? Should I tell folks they need to come to worship or not? Well, <clears throat> isn't when you participate at home, isn't that, uh, aren't you trying to assemble with them? I mean, you, either you online here and 10 or 15 more people over there online are with the church as they're doing communion. Can anybody in here see the danger of what Stanley's just described? Let's carry that forward, Stanley. Okay. Right. And I, I'm on your side. I'm, I'm not. Uh, I'm not beating you up here. I'm just using you to get both sides of this conversation mm -hmm. now. Go ahead. Um, let's carry what Stanley just said a little farther. He said we we met together. We watched the broadcast. We took the Lord's Supper in our home. We we sang with the. With the isn't that good enough? What do you mean? Okay. Well. Is that good enough? Well, I hope it was because we, we did that for two, three months. Okay, then why are you here? Why are you here? If it's good enough, you choose to be here. <clears throat> yeah. That's your, that's your choice. But if it's good enough, is being at home watching on the TV or the, vi the radio or the video or the iPad or whatever it is you did, if that's good enough, then... What do I do with these verses? You're going to step all over people's feet, toes, you're going to hurt people's feelings if you do. Hurt people's feelings. Yes, you will. Wow. Well, okay. no, no, hold on, hold on. Do, do, do you think this hurt anybody's feelings when they said, well, you know, if we show up down there, they're going to take our heads off. Well, you need to come anyway. I think it's, when you, when you head on this, you're dealing with the first century church, and then you're dealing with, there's a few people that, in my opinion, do not need to come to church because of the health factor that, that they're in, but they need to be coming to church. If you preach this, you're going to step on people's toes. They're going to um, possibly be hurt. What I would do is get with the elders and let us go out there and speak to them first, go see people first, then bring up a teaching of this, but I think that groundwork could be laid first to go out and see. I think we could argue that uh, it's my job to step on people's toes, right? Yeah. Stop meddling is what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Stop meddling. Preach the truth. <laughs> yeah. In season, out of season, rebuke, reprove, and exhort that's what Paul told Timothy. Okay. So rebu rebuke and reprove both carry with them the instruction of you're doing it wrong, fix it. Now, to Timothy, did Paul say, unless you're going to hurt their feelings, unless it's going to scare them in regard to their health, you see, we're in a really weird spot here. Yes, Cecil, good. tell me what you think about that. When Stan mentioned the fact that well, that's all we had just a couple of months, a couple of months, that's what the yeah. elders really wanted us to do, Stan. Yeah. I came up here and did a prayer. There was only 10, 11 people here. Yeah. That's what our elders wanted. I Let me and my elders. But put a pen in your thoughts so you don't forget it. All right. You got it? I got it. Okay. Were the elders wrong in telling us not to meet? Now, I'm not, I'm not asking you to indict our present no. elders. Were the elders of any churches wrong in telling the folks not to gather to worship. At that no. time, they were not. Okay, keep going. Well, and see, and the people that were right now that's not here, with the severe threats, I can still understand, you know, they may be concerned, but the folks that have limited or no threats should be here. Yes. I, 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 I think we should, we should still assemble together. Okay, so, so now I've got a double standard, and I'm, I'm still playing both sides here. Right. So I, I say, okay, for if you're well and healthy, then you're expected to come. But if you're not well and healthy, then it's, it's absolutely fine for you to stay at home. 
Uh, Jeremy, go <coughs> ahead. Well, I. Well, you. You were. Well, you can go ahead and preach, but we are all individually different. That's where it's like each will be judged according to their will. Yeah, but we're all going to be judged according to God's law. And, and that's one of the principles that we have certainly used as guidance throughout all of our time together as Christians is that God's law applies to everyone. It applies universally. It applies to those in Africa, India, Asia, America. It doesn't make any difference. We are all under the law of God. And we cannot take the law of God and, and make it... Y'all had situation ethics conversations in school, right? You, at some point in time, the end justifies the means kind of thing. That uh, is it okay to do something wrong? Uh, if it's, can something wrong be right? It's up to the individual to know. It, mm -hmm. We can't know. Okay, so here, here's the here's the problem. How do we take a passage that has been universally uh, accepted, and and it is. Let us consider one another. Now, the the consideration of what's happening in the book of Hebrews in ten twenty four and twenty five is that when you don't come to church, you are not taking care of your brethren, because you have a responsibility to interact with them to stir them up. And you can't do that if we're all distributed. Can we stir up one another while we're all sitting at home watching the TV? No. I'll guarantee absolutely. One of the big uh, holes in my life while we were uh, still broadcasting but we weren't meeting is I had absolutely no feedback from people. I didn't know what the status was of anyone's lives in the church. I was flying blind, so to speak. And it was a terrible place to be. I didn't. It was difficult to preach under those circumstances, not just to the empty house, but uh, we need one another. We need, and, and it's not just the fact that we have the same goals. Do not forsake the gathering of yourselves together. It's in print, black and white. Well, yeah, but, but the threat of this might be death. You make the choice yourself. God gave us the right to choose. Joy prints a sheet every week with the shut-ins down there. Yeah. They can't be here. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, so we can't say that. Is there a difference, though, in can't and won't? Yeah, there is. Oh, yeah. Now, see, some people cannot make a different choice. Right. But some right. people can. And, and here can we preach are. preach on that. And we make the choice, Tim. You can preach on it and say we should be here if we're able to. So, so you think I ought to preach that? Yeah, I'm going to say <clears throat> that I probably fall between closer to that two over there. Well, I, we could probably be a 1.1. I'm going to be about a 1.2. 1.3. You know, all the way up to it, here. It would be risky for me to make it. If I get this virus, it would be risky for me to pull through at my age and my health. What I have. But the way I look at it, is I go to work every day. I have not missed a day. I wear that mask, and I separate from the guys at work. And we got about 30 people. And three of those have COVID-19, three of them. And they're not there when they get it. But you have interacted with them or said something. Now, most of them, uh, two of them, don't get there till after I leave in the morning. And one other one is hardly So there. two of the folks in your work group have tested positive? Three. Three of the folks in your work group have tested positive. Mm -hmm. So that would put you in the, do you know anyone personally in town who got it? Yes, I do. Yeah. All right. That yeah. puts you in that category. Yes, it sure does. So, now, mean, from a contact tracing standpoint, you know, the CDC says anybody who's been in contact with someone who has had it, right. then... Yeah, I have been in contact with them. I'm just saying, when I, when I go to work every morning... Yeah. I, I'll usually open things up, and then I'll sit in there until people start getting there, and I kind of ease out in the yard, mm -hmm. and I'll I find me a tailgate to sit on or somewhere to get away from it. Smoke a cigarette, drink a pint of whiskey. <laughs> well, maybe not that bad. Stuff that's not wrong. Yeah, but I don't, I don't get around it. A little bit say, If you come to church, I mean, what's the difference? That, that was my feeling, and Angie, too. She goes to work every day. She wears a mask. She's behind a screen. She deals with people. So yeah. we can come to church and do the same thing. It would be wrong for me, I feel like, to stay home. If I'm going to work and doing but, all that, why can't you come to church? And 
church. And that, that's an interesting statement because you know you got folks that they, they won't go to church but they're going to the grocery store. They won't go to the church Walmart. but they go to the hair salon. They won't go to the church but they go to Walmart. They won't go to church but they go to work. Yeah. They go to family reunions. They'll go to but yeah, I'm not going to church. Justin, go ahead. I mean, in terms as to whether or not you realize I'm, I'm I'm on both sides of this issue, right? I've not come down with a position yet. Okay. But everyone's having this conversation. Yes, they are. On some level, division is everywhere. Yes, it is. We are treating the potential with the certainty of disfellowship, disharmony. That's certain. You can't make it worse. You can't make a wedge. Okay, wait a minute. My Start over. I'm not sure. I thought I had a grip on you, then I lost it. Well, I mean, to suggest that, you know, whether there's a question to be a little more forceful about um, being a Christian under these circumstances, um, I don't think you could step on anybody's toes any more than what they've done already. You think I should be more forceful? That's your position? Well, no, I'm not. Maybe I'm playing both. I'm just... But... In my father's congregation, where he's an elder, uh, this next Sunday will be the last Sunday that that preacher is there. Strictly just a rub on how to deal with all this. They can't agree. You know, they, the preacher and the elders don't agree? And the preacher is abruptly resigned. He wants them open or closed? He's more on the conservative you know, side of, you know, we're, we're moving too fast, we're exposing people, you know, a bit too much, and... We should stay closed longer, be more restricted. He was, he was a little more on that. And then, you know, when they opened up, it was, well, what should services look like? And then that wasn't, he didn't have enough time to, to preach at that point. I mean, it was just, it was just a, a cancer that seemed to just permeate. And, and he didn't, I guess, make himself known clear enough to where there couldn't be just this abrupt change. and. I mean, he's the guy that conducted our wedding. You know, he, he baptized me. You know, he's um, left and come back. He's somebody that's very close to that community and close to my father and close to everybody there. And this was enough effectively to kill him. Families can't get away from this conversation. People nope. do not agree. The, the conversation doesn't go away. And Just this fellowship is... Justin has brought something up that we have not... Well, I've only rubbed up against it in a couple of places and, talk to bleakly. Churches are splitting over this issue. And when I say churches, I don't mean that there's uh, a, uh, a organized division where, you know, 40% of the congregation says, okay, we're ready to split over this topic, and they, they march on. I don't mean that. It's a one by one, family by family. There are issues that are coming up where members of the Lord's church in that local church have such strong feelings regarding this against the elders, the preachers, other members, that they are either saying they're not going to come to that church anymore, or they have stopped going to that church, or they've stopped going to all churches, or they are causing trouble. There are splits happening because of this this health issue. That's amazing to me that in 2,000 years of the history of Christianity, Persecution has not brought about the kind of damage that's happening right now as this virus is. Doctrinal issues, big doctrinal issues, marriage and divorce, and all of the conversation regarding that did not split the number of churches and people as are being impacted by this right now. That's amazing to me. Now that you need it's a very potent virus. <laughs> that you need to preach on. Okay. How do I do that? Well, I Because, can... you know, here we are. There's there's no... Where's the moral right and wrong? And see, you know, well, this question. Is it is it wrong not to go to church? There may be some people that need some encouragement about that part. Is it okay for me to come to church? But if it was okay for us... And here's, here's the point that I made to David and where we, we kind of... Well, we didn't draw swords... I was doing it as a devil's advocate then. And he said, you know, it was okay then, but it's not okay now. And I said, I don't know that you can have it both ways. If it was okay then, then 
how can it not be okay now? If you've got somebody who that's what they believe, well, I, I'm afraid of getting out there. I don't want to be out there. I'm going to just stay at home and watch church for the rest of my life. Really? For how long? You know, a, a month, a year, two years, five years? Where does it quit? Well, they'll the, eventually drift off. I can tell you that. Exactly right. We are losing. We're in the process of losing. Look around. Look at this class. Look at the attendance when we gather for worship. Now, Isn't it more convenient just to stay at home? There, that's another problem. It is convenient. In fact, you know, a lot of folks say, you know, hey, if I can get out of my chair on Sunday morning and uh, go into the kitchen and get me a cup of coffee and a donut and come back and sit in my chair in my floppy shoes and my pajamas or whatever you got on, and I can open up my iPad and sit here and worship and, and watch church, and I didn't have to get up, I didn't have to get dressed, and I didn't have to go down to the church building, I didn't have to... If I can do that, then why can't I do it now? If I can do it now, why do I need to go anywhere? Well, you provide the maze through a video. Joy and I were talking this morning about something we'll just about like this. You know, we, even though we are thankful that the technology was available for us to do that, and we still will do that some because of Joy's mother. But the, the thing is, you know, we were thinking, uh oh, this has become an unintended consequence. Uh, you know, is it a double-edged sword? Yes. Yes. Should we cut it off? Should we drop no. the sword? You know, we didn't have, because of the wacko, I mean, the stuff that happened with the internet, we didn't get to broadcast Wednesday night. So if you stayed home from worship Wednesday night, you missed it. You missed out. If that was what your expectation was, which has always been one of my pet peeves about technology. That's why I hate using the overhead for in worship is because you're dependent on technology. What happens if the connection fails, if my iPad fails, if the stuff in the sound room fails, if the screen fails, if whatever? You disrupt the worship of God, and I think that is a horrible thing, but that's another topic. It went off last Sunday, as a matter of fact. It was still on. Yes, okay, so now, is it a good thing or a bad thing? David's position was, I wish it would all go away. We just quit, and if you don't come, you get nothing. Why'd you do it to begin with to get to those who could not get to church to provide them a way to worship? Here's take here's the takeaway from the class. Do what? I said there was a time where we knew nothing. We had no information to go on. Here's the takeaway from here. I'm not sure how to deal with some of these issues. I've got I've got positions. I've got things I think. I, I've got biblical scriptures that that lead me in a path of this is not a good path we're on. I, I don't think that uh, where we're headed is healthy for the church. And anything that's unhealthy for the church, you've got to come back and look at what caused it and what is what is allowing it to proceed. And I think the 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 thinking of people that say. I can continue sitting at home and worship God effectively and it be just as good as being there. That's a problem. That's dangerous. Mm -hmm. That's a problem. Now, having said that, here we are. How, how do I preach this? Should I preach this? How would you preach it if you didn't have one and two? What if we just had technology and not a Let's, let's go back, you know, if it was the government that came in and said, we're going to take your life and take your property if y'all go to church. You know what I'd have said? Come and get it. But this somehow has put us into a different category. And now, I'm not sure where we are. Well, thanks for the conversation. We'll talk about it next Sunday morning. We we'll probably will. <laughs> we probably will.